Hello and welcome to the Adventure Toolkit Example Reel number 19. My name is Glenn Storm and I'm from Hot Iron Productions and today we're going to go over version 1.2 changes and additions beginning with the changes. Sound effects object is a tool that identified sound effects audio objects so that you could mute them or not through the menu manager using the scene manager. We've enhanced it so I so it can identify sound effects, but it can also identify musical stings, that is, non-looping music. Or it can identify voice or interface or movie audio. So, as opposed to musical loops, which are still handled by the music manager, and it does crossfade and keep persistent music through levels, musical stings are non-looping musical tracks that play once like um, your character your player won the level or they died you might play a particular musical sting and it does not loop you can now control all of these through the scene manager independently sprite animator and texture animator have been enhanced or should i say fixed so that if they are pointed to if there if there are two of them and they are pointed to the same object they know, they intelligently know to turn the old one off. So uh, while you used to have to set up something with the event manager, a st simple state machine, you don't need to do that anymore. You can just use the animator tools and they will know to turn the old ones off. The economy manager has a value display and it now automatically scales with the size of the viewport. This just makes it fall in line with the other display options on other tools. Let's look at the additions now. In the event category, there is tool setup. In the interaction category, there is type box. Tool setup is a tool designed to modify other tools at runtime. So this is useful in, another, in a number of cases. Uh, one is if your game conditions change and you need to change the behavior of your tools without setting up a, a, a more complex trigger system or a separate trigger system, you can use this tool to just change the values on those existing tools in your trigger system. Another very useful case to use this would be if you've spawned a prefab into your scene and you need it to hook up to your scene's trigger system. Or if you've brought in tools from another scene, like loaded them in from another scene using the singleton by name, you can use, again, this tool setup tool to have it hook into your trigger system in the scene and uh, make things run. So if you've spawned in a, an enemy and you need it to know exactly where the player is, or if the player shoots it and it needs to actually record uh, on a counter or an economy manager uh, for score, it can do that. Let's look at the properties. First is setup delay. This is the number of seconds from the activation of this tool until the, the setup begins. Next is tool. This is a reference to the tool that will be set up. In this case, I've set up uh, to, to act on this interval trigger. Next is property name. This is the name of the property that will be changed, and it will be fed an input value. Uh, it's important to note that the property name does not uh, is not the same as it appears in the inspector. The inspector makes it more human readable. It capitalizes the first word and it separates this into uh, multiple words based on capitalization. But in fact, this is just one word. The name is one word. So in this case, I'm acting on interval trigger and I'm trying to affect this property, which here in the inspector looks like activate on trigger, three different words. It's actually one name, activate on trigger. And it's important to note that not only is it one word, the first letter is not capitalized. This convention is followed through all uh, property names in all the tools. Okay. Next is property type. This is the type of input that this property will take. In this case, uh, interval trigger looks for a game object reference. So I've set this to uh, be the property type of game input, a uh, game object, excuse me. But the other types of property that you can affect are Boolean, in other words, a checkbox, integer, in other words, a whole number, float, in other words, a decimal number, string, in other words, alphanumeric text, game object reference, and script, in other words, a tool reference itself, just like this tool property up here. So based on how uh, you've configured property type, the tool setup tool will then pay attention to these next input uh, 
properties that are here. So there is boolean input, integer input, float, string, game object input, which is a reference to another game object. In this case, I've set it to be the reference of this random trigger. And script input. So you can drag a reference here, and now this tool is configured to act on this interval trigger and populate the activate on trigger property with this game object type and populate it with this game object reference, the random trigger. So if I look at interval trigger, currently activate on trigger is empty. My tool setup will populate this with a reference to random trigger. Okay. Let's, oh, sorry, the last properties are um, find input by name. If this checkbox is checked, instead of um, looking at a direct reference that you've populated here in game object input or script input, you can check this box and have this tool look for a unique object name and use that as the input. This is important that uh, you could use this because for spawned objects or objects brought in through level loading, you need to reference them by name because they aren't in the scene when you configure it. Okay, so I could check this box and type in a unique name for the game object here in input name, and that's what it would do, it would go find it. The last property is reset on complete. If this checkbox is checked, this tool will turn itself off when it is done setting up and get it ready to be reactivated to use over and over again. Okay, let's hit play. Let's um, activate tool setup. Uh, before I do so, let's just check. And yes, uh, interval trigger does have activate on trigger and it is currently empty. If I tried to use this tool right now, it would give me an error. Um, so let's pretend like I just spawned this uh, interval trigger in and I need to configure it. My tool setup runs and now I look at interval trigger and sure enough it is correctly pointed to random trigger so when I activate this it will turn on the random trigger and uh, well it does something in this case I'm turning on uh, a, a number of randomly selected uh, colored spheres so one quick other thing to point out here is that not only can we affect uh, boolean type variables integer float string blah 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 but we can also affect this type of input, the pull-down menu. This is otherwise known as an enumerator, or enum, and it acts just like integer. It may not be obvious, but um, the first element is 0, second element is 1, etc. So this interval trigger actually does have a pull-down. Uh, it's right now set to regular, so it goes at a regular interval. If I want it to go to a range uh, between, uh, say, negative 1 and positive positive. Uh, I would have to switch it to uh, from regular to range, in other words from 0 to 1 here. So if I change the tool setup to activate on, act on interval mode, and use integer input and enter the input of 1, it should actually do that. So I'm talking about interval mode, all one word, and the first letter is not capitalized. The property type is integer and the input I'd like to give it is 1. So if I, and oh by the way I do need to have my reference for this to work, um, I'm going to turn this on now and interval trigger is set to regular right now. If I hit tool setup it should switch to range and it does. So now when I do my interval trigger instead of it happening every second it now goes at a, at a random interval that goes fast sometimes and slow other times. Okay. Tool setup, very powerful. Let's move on to the next tool. In the interaction menu, there is type box. Type box is designed to provide a pop-up and then type text on the pop-up. So this is useful for story introduction or simple pop-ups, but it's also useful for dialogue and things like that. Let's look at the properties. First is text to display. This is the text that will be displayed on, on the pop-up, and uh, it's important to note that you can include rich text markup. In other words, you can bold the text, you can color the text, you can size the text, uh, etc. So um, there are some rich text tags that Unity will accept, and that will be accepted here. Next is display delay. This is the ton number of times amount of time in seconds from the activation of this tool until the pop-up appears. Next is letter type interval. 
this type box has the ability to type letter by letter. And if this is set to a number greater than zero, this is the amount of time in seconds between each letter. Next is type interval variance. And this is a way to randomize that interval between letters. So you can enter a time here and uh, the letter type interval will be plus or minus this amount. Next is allow skip if this checkbox is checked the player is able to click on screen and it will go from typing letter by letter based on that type interval to typing uh, quickly and if they click again it will display the entire pop-up instantly. Next is type box. This is a rectangle type of input that includes X and Y position and width and height size. This is uh, in proportion to the screen space and so I have 25% from the top 20% from the left in Y, uh, width of 50% and a height of 50%. Next is Inherit Transforms. If this checkbox is checked, uh, the pop-up display will inherit the transform values of this game object. So the X and Y position will correspond to the X and Y position of the pop-up on screen. Z position will correspond to the depth. Scale X and Y will correspond to the width and height, respectively. So you could attach a simple mover to this game object and animate your pop-ups. Next is background. This is an optional uh, reference to a texture that you can use for your background. If you don't use this, the default GUI box texture will be used. Uh, next is text font. This is another optional uh, property. If you want your own font, you can use that. Otherwise, uh, the default Arial font will be used. Next is font size. This is the font size that will be displayed when the width of your viewport is 1024 pixels wide. And it will scale appropriately based on the size of your viewport. Next is text color. This is the color of your text. Next is text padding. This is the amount of space around your text between the text and the edge of the pop-up uh, background. And this is again in uh, a proportion of the screen space. Next is letter type sound effects. So you do have the option to give it an audio clip reference and it will play this clip every letter. That, and last is activate on complete. So when it is done typing all the letters of your text or if the user has skipped to the end, uh, this will be, uh, this tool is able to activate another object. Okay, so let's hit play. Let's activate our type box. And we see and hear some text being typed onto this pop-up. Because I've populated letter type sound effects with a clip, it automatically added an audio source. Um, this is optional, you don't have to do that. You can also see on this display that I've added some of these rich text tags. So um, it did do the size, and this is an absolute size. So if I resize my viewport, it keeps that absolute size, so it very, looks very much bigger in this small viewport and maintains that same uh, font size here, even though the rest of it automatically scales. We also have uh, bolding and uh, italicized and colored text. So let's. this is neat for something like a story introduction or a simple pop-up, but let, I want to point out that it could also be used for something like dialogue. So let me briefly modify this and redo it. Take away the sound effect. So let's pretend you walked up to uh, the old man and you wanted to see this happen here. Let's do this. So here's the old man talking to you. And this could be used for dialogue as well. Again, if your users decide to click, it will type fast, and if they click again, it will instantly display. Okay, so that's the type box, and that is the tool setup, and that's all the time we have for this video. Please stay tuned for the next one.